All right, so this week on Market Mondays, you're in, and um, we talk a little bit about interest rates. Uh -huh. And as soon as we shut the camera off, you threw these bombs, and I was like, I need you to come back and talk <laughs> about this. For people out there that want to understand behind the scenes what to look at, mm -hmm. what you're looking at when you make some predictions, when you look into your crystal ball. Tell me what the hell this means. A lot of talk has been around inflation. People people don't realize that inflation is the direct indicator of, of interest rates, meaning that they are in unison going, working together. Uh, what we have seen is, as you know, since March of 2022, inflation has been on the rise. However, what we do is we, we want to see when we have a peak or when inflation has been grappled with. And what we do is we look at that year over year, meaning in February of 2022, how would that stack up against February of 2023 in regards to is inflation increasing or decreasing? And that's just so that we are taking into account seasonality. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we're looking at this year over year. And what you're going to notice is in October, October, November of 2021, you're going to notice that inflation was kind of high. I mean, 0.6% we we're up, then 0.5%. Same in December 0.6, but if we compare those now to 2022, we see that, okay, we start to see a little bit of tapering because yeah. we see October of 2022 is 0.3%. October of 2021 was 0.6. October of 2022 is 0.3. It's a lower number. Yeah. We see how, because we are starting, the U.S. economy is starting to get a grip, a grapple, on inflation. Okay. And what we're looking for now is, is a trend. Do we, do we see this trend continuing? News out, January 12th, inflation down 0.1%. So again, adding to this idea of a trend that inflation is, we're getting a grip on it. What does that ultimately mean? Well, once we have a grip on inflation, the federal government is going to have that moment where they're going to have to decide, okay, do we have an idea of stability here? Or do we have stability and we're going to lower start to lower interest rates, or are we going to hold hold tight? Yeah. I think we can all agree that the federal government has been working very hard to stop inflation. So they're not going to just pull it all off, create a massive housing surge, if you will, again. However, since inflation is being grappled with and the numbers are showing this, and if we look to the chart again, January is January of 2022 now, 0.6%. I can't fathom that number going up in 2023. So I think we're going to see this nice trend of rates starting to settle in. Okay. I don't think we're going to see a spike. And then what we look to is this other chart. Historically speaking, there is a relationship between the 30 year fixed rate and the 10 year US Treasury. Typically, there is about 175 to 200 basis points. What is a basis point? For every 100 basis points is 1%. So what you typically see is if the 10 year US Treasury is at three and a half percent, you would historically see uh, 200 basis points or 2% higher, meaning the 30 year fixed rate would be at 5.5% because it's 2% greater. Well, right now we don't have that 200 basis point. We actually have about 300 basis points. Even in the last month, you started to see these starting to tighten because the U.S. Treasury today is around three and a half percent, but we're not quoting rates at six and a half. Yep. Why would there be a greater spread? You know, if it's normally uh, 175 to 200 basis points or one and three quarters uh, to two percentage points, why would it have gotten to three? Inflation. Absolutely inflation. It is It is the the volatility the uncertainty that is creating basically a bigger gap. And once that gap is recognized and inflation is grappled with, you're gonna notice these, these spreads, if you will, to come more harmonious to what we've seen in history, okay. this 200 basis point. So what I'm saying is, as you start to see inflation come to a, the US economy has a grapple on it, start to look and see how the US 10 year treasury is going to start shrinking that spread between the US 10 year treasury and the 30 year fix is gonna get back to this two, 200 basis points or 2% gap. Long term projection, I think you're gonna see rates come down. I don't think you're gonna see them come down tomorrow 
or in a month because the federal government isn't going to rip the mandate off. But haven't they come down a little bit? Or? They have. They absolutely have. But what they're doing is it's a slow, gradual, yep. and they're letting, essentially, they're letting certain subsets in, back into the market. Some people will say, okay, I will grapple with a six and a quarter rate. Others are going to wait. So do you see that slow downward trend continuing? Do you see it flattening out? Do you see it going up in terms of the real interest rate that somebody who comes to you to get a loan, what are they going to see? I think in the, in the short term, I think you're seeing some leveling. Okay. I don't think you're going to see something earth shattering where all of a sudden one day we wake up and interest rates are up a half a percent to a 1% lower. I don't think you're going to see that. What about a half of a percent to 1% high? Don't see that either. I don't, I, given the fact that rates are associated and affiliated with inflation and we have inflation looks to be handled with, yep. something major would have to happen for us to go the other way. You're seeing flattening, which is nothing more than stabilizing. And as we continue to be stable and have confidence in where the economy is going, you will notice interest rates start to come down, potentially eight months to a year. Well, you heard it here first. Aaron, if somebody that sees this has a question, they could put it in the comments below, but how can they get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of me is my phone, 843-505-5623. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Appreciate it. Thanks.